Colorado today the same question. Is the oil and gas well near my home or business safe? It's a natural question. After a house exploded in Firestone on Friday, killing two men, and then the state's largest energy company shut down 3,000 wells similar to the one close to that home. But back to the question, are the wells safe? It raises an obvious second question. How often are they inspected? The answer, not often. Colorado has a couple dozen inspectors and 54,000 wells. But with 50,000 wells and less than, less than 30 inspectors statewide, it, it's an almost impossible job. Obviously, it's not enough. And so this is something we're going to need to keep pushing on. That well, less than 200 feet from the house in Firestone that exploded, it had been inspected every five years or so. Most recently, it got the okay in August of 2014. Now, I have to stress here, the cause of the home explosion has not been directly tied to the well. They're still looking at that. And Anadarko's shutdown of the other wells is a voluntary precaution by the company. Perhaps you've heard some talk today of a similar explosion two years ago in Firestone. Our 9 Wants to Know team took a look at that and found that it was a stove malfunction that caused a natural gas leak. Congressman Ken Buck has refused to talk to Next ever since we pointed out how he tried to have it both ways on Republicans' plan to repeal Obamacare. He told us that he didn't support it. And then, a week later, he said he had supported it. That new position won Buck praise from President Trump on Twitter. We've been trying to get a straight answer about the Buck and forth since then. So we flew to Washington and found Congressman Buck, who offered a second provably false statement to our politics guy, Brandon Ritterman. And then the congressman walked away. Hi, congressman. How are you? Good. We happen to be in D.C. Well, I'm happy to have you here. We'll see just how happy he is in a moment. After he ducked a scheduled interview in Denver, our Brandon Ritterman joined Congressman Buck on an elevator in Washington. Come on on the elevator. And now it's going down. What you did was really unfair. Um, how, you, how is it unfair? Because what you said was that the president tweeted something that made me change my opinion. That is and false. We were very clear the president's tweet happened after Buck rewrote history on his position. We'll show you our original report right after Congressman Buck wraps up his point. I, the president's tweet had nothing to do with my position. Here's the original report on how Buck changed his position and then won praise from the president. Congressman Ken Buck's stunning flip-flop has fooled at least one person, President Trump, who tweeted his approval of Congressman Buck's new position. Back to the Capitol, where we're still trying to find out where Congressman Buck really stands on repealing and replacing the Affordable Care Act, and we're not having much success. Bad. As evidence, I've, I've got to go. But but you should look at your well, which which was true, Congressman. Was it was it true that you were going to vote for it, and you weren't going to tell us? Long plane ride to Washington for a short conversation with Congressman Buck. So here's my take on this. Congressman Buck is baking himself a layer cake of provably false statements, hoping he will never have to eat it. And he's probably right. He's making a safe bet that the Republicans who support him dislike us in the media enough that they'll just look past his conflicting and false statements. He's obviously not the first politician to try that tactic, but every time voters shrug it off, more elected officials are just emboldened to stray from the truth. Man, our Brandon Ridham is working hard for the money today, tracking down the people who represent you in Washington. Our senators, Cory Gardner and Michael Bennett, haven't been much for town halls lately, but Brandon did convince them to sit down and talk about the threat from North Korea and how the U.S. should respond. Everybody here on Capitol Hill still buzzing about the big bus trip all the senators got to take down Pennsylvania Avenue to hear about the situation in North Korea directly from the folks at the White House. Still more questions than answers about U.S. foreign policy on North Korea going forward. But as we sat down with both U.S. senators from Colorado for balance of power, we wanted to know how worried should we be? Do you feel like we're spooling up to military conflict with them? I don't think we are. In fact, I think it's clear yesterday that they're preparing for every contingency, but their first contingency is not uh, military by any means. Uh, it's pre preparing to make sure that we're protecting our ally South Korea, our ally Japan, and the homeland of the United States. But uh, they're also making sure that we lead with diplomacy. And I think that was the message that Secretary Tillerson and, and Secretary Mattis actually delivered, is that we have to exhaust our, our diplomatic options, and we are by no means anywhere close to exha exhausting our diplomatic options. They had nukes before this administration. They've been testing them. I mean, what's different? Well, it's an urgent, this is an urgent question for our national defense, the defense of our allies, South Korea and Japan, as Corey said. I have 
very high confidence in the national security team that the, the president has assembled. It's also very important for North Korea to understand that if necessary, we're going to use force uh, to, to end this threat against us and our allies. We also talked with both senators about President Trump's first 100 days in office. We'll have that for you here on Next Tomorrow. And you can catch the extended interview on Balance of Power. That's Sunday morning on Nine News right before Meet the Press. On Capitol Hill, I'm Brandon Ritterman for Next. All right, let's get out of Washington now. Take a ride on the A-Line. Train to the plane, is it working today? Yes, I think they might have fixed this thing. We told you the day that it gets the all clear, we have promised I will be on board with an I Heart the A-Line t-shirt and a party hat. First that guy on the United flight got dragged, then United got dragged, now that guy's getting paid. A settlement for the passenger today, that was pretty fast, and some new promises to all the rest of us who would prefer to leave the plane in one piece. United says it will no longer call police to haul people off planes unless there's a security issue. And it'll begin offering up to $10,000 for people to voluntarily leave flights that are overbooked. And there's a, no, there's a new no questions asked policy if you lose your bag. So thanks, dude, who got dragged bleeding off a plane. You just made the skies a little bit friendlier for all of us. Not really sure how next came to be the ridiculousness police in Colorado, but it's a service that we're happy to provide. Step in and sort it out when you see something like a, a disabled parking space that is entirely blocked by a utility pole. How in the world is that how it's supposed to work? Viewer named Kim sent us that photo of the space outside the new Trivium Salon in Louisville. The city approved that location for the space because the pole was supposed to be gone by now. Yet the pole remains. So the salons added a second temporary disabled parking spot elsewhere. But the folks at the salon know this looks bad. Obviously, it draws attention. You're here. Somebody called you to say there's some strange situation here. And we agree it is a, a strange situation. I don't know what people think. And obviously, as, as business owners, that's concerning to us. I, I hope that people don't look at us and say, well, that was stupid of them to put the handicapped <laughs> parking space where there's a pole. City of Louisville says that Comcast and CenturyLink are working to bury those lines and replace the pole, and it'll be 30 to 60 days if red tape doesn't delay them. But then you never know, maybe this will just light a little fire under their posterior. So today is Christmas for John Elway. The NFL draft is underway right now, and when John's name is called, he will go up and pick the biggest present left under the tree. America has the sheer amusement of watching the Cleveland Browns fumble around with the first overall pick. They're on the clock now. Broncos are at number 20, so they're a ways off, as in watch after next. ESPN's Adam Schefter says he's heard that they would like to move up. Don't talk to me about this Christian McCaffrey business. I would love it just as much as you would, but our Broncos guy Mike Kliss says his league sources expect the Broncos are going to take a left tackle with their first pick. If the Broncos move while we're on the air, we will certainly let you know about it here. May I make a recommendation? And this one kind of pains me because I'm about to recommend a mass-produced beer, kind of. Heineken just put out a new ad that does everything that that terrible Kendall Jenner Pepsi ad aspired to do. Heineken's ad is called Worlds Apart. They brought six strangers into a warehouse, had them talk about different cultural topics, being transgender, feminism, climate change. Once they stated their strong opinions, they were paired up with someone with the exact opposite view. They talk. They get to know each other, and then at the end, the videos are played, and only then do they realize the perspective of the other person. They're asked to sit down and have a beer and talk about their differences. It makes you think the ending is truly beautiful. There's a link on the next Facebook page. Enjoy it with whatever drink you choose. So you know that list thing that's going around Facebook? It's a little bit annoying. List 10 bands or musicians you've seen in concert. My producers made me cave and put together a list, which I know is going to surprise horrify or amuse all of you when you find out that I'm an enormous country music fan. So here we go. Nine of these concerts I have seen. One is a lie. Can you tell which one? Alan Jackson, Florida Georgia Line, Brooks and Dunn, Zach Brown Band, Toby Keith, Tim McGraw, Jason Aldean, George Strait, Clay Walker, Chris Young. Which one of these have I not seen in concert? Use the hashtag HeyNext during the break. We'll let you know in a sec. The snow this weekend is the considerate kind, falling when and where we need it. We meet someone with a legitimate claim to be the luckiest man alive. And this woman from Colorado can run faster than you. A five and a half minute mile, and then another, and 24 more. No American was faster that day. Next.
One storm system moving out, another one moving in, taking aim at us for the start of the weekend. Right now, we do have a few scattered showers, some up in the high country, a little bit of light snowfall, others across the far eastern plains. We'll be watching those moving out into Kansas, taking with it a lot of that wet weather, the stronger severe thunderstorms. By about 11 o'clock, everything is pretty much out of eastern Colorado, with the exception along uh, the I-76 corridor near Fort Morgan. By tomorrow morning, it's a quiet beginning for us here in Denver. Some clear skies, but wait till the afternoon. Here comes the rain by about 3, 4 o'clock. Light rain showers pop up the umbrella. You're all right, but then the temperatures start to cool off dramatically. Right there around dinner time, we'll start to see a little bit of light snowfall, certainly up in the mountains is when we anticipate and where we anticipate the heaviest snow. 8 a.m. on your Saturday morning, you wake up, might find a little bit of snow here in the metro area. Right now, about 1 to 4 inches is what it looks like, not quite as much in northern Colorado. 6 to 12 inches above 7,000 feet around the foothills. Once you get even higher, you'll see more than a foot. And then that bullseye just to the south, Douglas County, as well as Jeff Cope, the usual suspects picking up the heaviest amount of snow. The good news is the storm system pushes out relatively fast. You can still kind of salvage your weekend on Sunday. It looks a OK, and then we're back close to 80 degrees with sunshine, Kyle, by next week. All right. Thank you, Danielle. Mm -hmm. The Registry of Holocaust Survivors lists 195,000 names, each with a story worth revisiting this week. If only we had time. So America sets aside a few days to remember the Holocaust. Our Noel Brennan went to Boulder to meet a man named Walter Plywoski. I had a fairly happy childhood before the war in Poland. My name is Walter Plywoski. I'm 88 years old, almost. The memories are always difficult, but I also think about it as an obligation to talk about it. 1st of September, 1939. The first one was the Lutz Ghetto an urban concentration camp designed to slaughter by disease, hot, humid, we had to surrender. We got shipped into Auschwitz. The doors were swung open of the freight car. People were screaming, Rouse, Rouse, meaning out. The order was given, women left and men right. The awful part about the camps was that the death was impersonal. I didn't run to say goodbye to my mother. We discovered she was guest on arrival the next day. The name of the son of a bitch who killed my father. His name was Edmund Zdrojewski. Killed my father by beating him to death with a shovel. That's my father. You don't survive things like that just because you're a daring hero. You just have to be lucky as hell. So part of my talking about it is to thank the unknown for the help they gave. Even if Denver's homeless can find jobs, they're still faced with another daily barrier. Until now. And the woman who went from Colorado to London, she didn't run there, but probably could have based on the way she smoked every American in the race. Next. Runners impress me. I ran once, being chased. Laura Tweet was being chased as well. Every other American woman in London was behind her in the marathon, and they didn't catch her. The 28-year-old from Durango was the top U.S. finisher, six overall for women. She finished in two hours, 22 minutes, 38 seconds. That, people, five-and-a-half-minute miles. It was my second marathon. Um, so it, you know, it, it unfolded, um, you know, the way my coach and troop and I were hoping it would. All in all, it was a good day and everything just came together for me. But yeah, I didn't really know until the finishing stretch when you see like that big finish clock and I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to do it. Like I'm, I'm going to get under 226. So, um, it was exciting. Uh, yeah, it was a huge day. It was a huge PR. Um, and just to hit the goal that we wanted going in, um, it always feels good to do that. Just get out there and, uh, 
you know, and, and enjoy it and not compare yourself to anyone else. Find people that, you know, are gonna, are wanting to be out there and do it with you. That makes a huge difference to have other people around you. Um, it definitely makes it a lot easier. So um, yeah, just enjoy it and, uh, and do it for yourself and um, chase down your own goals. Don't think you should be doing something because someone else is doing something. Laura says she followed up the marathon with a burger, sweet potato fries, and a beer. I see you. Laura's going to take a little time to rest and recover before she resumes training in Boulder. She's hoping to represent the U.S. at the London 2017 World Championships. She'll find out if she made the cut next week. Next time you see a homeless person and think to yourself, why don't they have a job? Well, take a second and then think about everything else that you need once you have a job. Clean clothes, something to eat on your lunch break, a way to get there and back. Photojournalist Chris Hansen and our Steve Steger found people who are putting together that last piece of the puzzle. What can we help you with today? A fresh start is rarely a lonely endeavor. How do you take your coffee? So it's only fitting that many of them start here. Is there anything else I can help you with while we wait? This is City Square. There you go. Mm, no, thank you. A place that connects our homeless neighbors with the people and the resources they need to start over. Food, employment assistance, and today, we got a bunch of bikes back there today. Transportation. Yeah, it's perfect. All of it free of charge to people who need it. Well, you know, in this economy and people like Brian Carter, you just deal with it. Brian lost his job three years ago. Used my 401k and everything <sighs> to pay for the, the rent. He paid off the rest of his lease, filed for bankruptcy, moved in with a friend and worked wherever he could, searching for his fresh start. <sighs> Applying for jobs, one job after another, making phone calls. That perseverance? But it only makes you stronger. Paid off this week. Yes, I just got a new job, um, and I'm working at night uh, as a mail sorter, and um, it's tempt to hire, and I came here today just to get a bike. Hi, Dave. I talked to you on the phone. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Cityscape partners with Recycle Bicycles. You know, I'm not really picky. To give bikes to those in need. This bike, 10 speed. <laughs> it's hard to start over all by yourself. And if you have trouble with it, you bring it back here, we'll fix it for you. Good oh, thing yeah. Brian Carter's not alone. <laughs> for next, I'm Steve Steger. Happy to report Brian just got a new apartment, 51st and Pena. To get to work, he has to go down and catch the bus on Colfax. That's a ways. That bike's going to come in handy. The answer now to our version of America's most annoying game of the moment. That whole Facebook thing, 10 concerts I've been to. Moments ago, I bravely confessed to you my love of country music. I am not interested in your judgment. I am simply interested in your answer to which of these you think is a lie. Which concert have I not seen? Alan Jackson, Florida Georgia Line, Brooks and Dunn, Zach Brown Band, Toby Keith, Tim McGraw, Jason Aldean, George Strait, Clay Walker, Chris Young. Number five, Toby Keith. I have not seen... Toby Keith in concert. Quick check. Man, a lot of people were playing this game with us throughout the show today. Mary Jean, Karen, Harriet, Christy, Luann, you guys guessed right. I have not heard Toby Keith sing in concert. I'll put a boot up. Okay, anyway, we're going to move on. Some great feedback tonight, and we will share it next. So it would appear most people are absolutely horrified to learn that I'm a country music fan, except Danae, who says, although we don't know each other, I wish we did. Thanks for the smiles. Well, that's what this is for. That's why we get together each evening. Victor's mom says, I was going to adopt you, but that was before I heard you're a country music fan. That's a deal breaker. Fine, like you anyway. And I feel like Alan probably says it best, you're just a beer-drinking redneck. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Takes one to know one. We are in good company, are we not? See you next time.